everybody and welcome to another top five records video. Today I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite songwriters, namely Lou Reed. I am immensely impressed by his body of work and although a lot of people think he was interesting solely in the Velvet Underground or perhaps uh, early in the 70s, I think he has found and lost, but mostly found his relevance throughout his entire career. I mean, this is a man, in his early days, he wrote a song like Heroin. One of the final songs he wrote was Rock Minuet. Those songs are brilliantly equal. And this, his entire life, although not consistently great, he has returned over and over again, over again, and sometimes making the most relevant records all around. It is very peculiar. It is very interesting because people usually tend to put him towards a certain moment in time. And I think you can't do that with Lou Reed because Lou Reed, as long as he lived, he was all around and his vision lasted. His lyrics developed, changed, improved. And he is just a mythical songwriter. I really love his work. On number five, best albums by Lou Reed. I'm gonna do a, a, an album he co-wrote, co-made with John Cale. It's Songs for Drella. Around the time when Andy Warhol died, John Cale and Lou Reed, who were in the Velvet Underground together, they met, I believe, at the funeral of Andy Warhol. And they decided it was time to do something to memorize their old friend and um, somewhat a father figure in a certain sense. Uh, because the uh, Andy Warhol managed and produced the Velvet Underground. And this is an album full of lyrics and references to Warhol. It is the memory of Warhol by these two men. It's sort of, uh, sort of what, something like a requiem. And it has such a beautiful content. There is great intimacy. I mean, Lou Reed on his guitar, John Cale on the piano, both being excellent vocalists. Um, both have a way of creating atmosphere with their voice, though not a typically beautiful voice. I think they both have beauty in them. And all these songs are such tiny, brilliant little stories in which at moments, especially the Reed, is incredibly honest about his relationship with Annie Warhol. For example, the time that uh, Warhol called him a rat. And Lou Reed somehow seems to suggest that Warhol might have been right in a certain way. At that moment, at, as a result of, of, of Lou Reed's actions, it is a beautiful, honest and fragile album. Now, far from fragile is a number four, Rock and Roll Animal. And Lou Reed is not the artist I would typically point out as a very good live artist. I have some records of his, I've seen some shows which were horrendous. On the other hand, for example, his Berlin tour from I believe 2006, 2007 was brilliant. And this is also brilliant. By the time he recorded Rock and Roll Animal, he was a pop icon because of the album Transformer. And he was playing with the idea of being a pop icon. He didn't like it or he posts as being cynical about it it was a very ambiguous uh, behavior but it proved to be nothing but brilliant the energy on this show is rare in the body of work of Lou Reed it has elements of rock hard rock for example the first song Sweet Jane it is an incredible long intro which also was not per se an artistic choice but um, okay I'll tell that story um, they were playing Sweet Jane as the opening song but the venue did not pay the band yet so Lou Reed would not come on stage until uh, he was paid so the uh, the intro is very long <laughs> uh, because Lou Reed just waited for his money backstage until he got up but that resulted in something very interesting an atmosphere of rock guitars taking over until he starts his beautiful song, Sweet Jane. And it's all in all incredible energy. Heroines on your light, white, white light, white heat, lady day, rock and roll. It is an awesome, awesome album. 
one of the best live albums ever and, and Lou Reed shows just the, the most amazing side of this. On a number three, New York. Lou Reed's 1989 album, New York. Now, this was uh, some an album which had to grow on me, yet there are so many good songs which have catchiness in it. By the time uh, Lou Reed started doing uh, uh, this album, he had developed a different kind of style. He was, as a vocalist, more laid back, and it was more like he was talk singing over awesome guitars. Just, um, uh, he had this quote that all you need in rock and roll is uh, two guitars, drums, and a bass, and that's all. And you really sense that his approach to music is different. Songs like Romeo Had Juliet, that's a nice song. Halloween Parade and Dirty Boulevard. Oh, those are epic writings. Late 80s, this man was beginning to rewrite. He became somewhat of a novelist. When you listen to Last Great American Whale, he starts writing much more like a novelist. I really love that. Great album and sounds incredible. He became an audiophile around this time. He became an audiophile and Lou Reed's audiophile face is just very impressive. And number two, Transformer. Lou Reed made his first album solo, I believe a year before this, and it flopped. Which is, by the way, not a bad album. The first album, Lou Reed, entitled Lou Reed, not a bad album. But then David Bowie came along, and together with Mick Rock, he produced Transformer. Now, a lot of people say, uh, Lou Reed uh, hopped the bandwagon of glam rock, and uh, he wanted to sound like Bowie, as they say in the film Almost Famous. But that's not really the case. Bowie wanted to produce Lou Reed, and the songs on here are Lou Reed songs. And those songs are Good! There is not a single bad song on this album. It rocks. Vicious, Annie's Chest, Perfect Day, Hanging Around, Walk on the Wild Side, Makeup, Satellite of Love, Wagon Wheel, New York Telephone Conversation. It's a very strange ditty song. I really love it. I'm So Free, Good Night Ladies. All of these songs are good. It is incredible. A masterpiece. Now, if you're gonna buy this, I have this one, and I also have a first UK pressing. I took this one out. This is a Speaker's Corner reissue. You can easily find it online. Why did I take this out? The Speaker's Corner beats the first British UK pressing. Speaker's Corner is the best version around, and it's affordable. It's affordable audiophile quality. Now the number one. This is actually the album which was used in a lawsuit by, I believe, RCA, his record label, that this man should not be left alone in a studio to record because his music would be too dark. Some people think the album used as evidence was Metal Machine music. It was not. It was this album, Berlin. And what the, uh, the, the, the record company did not understand was that Lou Reed, with legendary producer Bob Ezrin, and one of the finest pieces of music on Berlin. Berlin is a concept album about a relationship uh, from, I believe, two junkies. They were addicts. And uh, it tells the story of the ending of a relationship. And this has such an amazing atmosphere. It is spine chilling. But it has so much to say. It's not just a dark story to annoy the mind. It has so much to say about human limitations, about just not being able to go where you wanna go within your own personality, within your own behavior. And that makes this, I mean, this is a novel quality. It's a quality of a novel. This man, Lou Reed, is a brilliant writer. And this album sounds stellar. It's a masterpiece. Now, those are my five favorite Lou Reed albums. I'm very curious what you guys think. Please leave a comment below and agree, disagree. Let's start a conversation and see you in another video.